Hi, my name is Daisy and I made this personalized puzzle on my Glowforge. So keep watching and you can see how I did it and you can make one too. I use Inkscape, it's a free program. Just go ahead and download it and you can get started on your designs. I'm pretty new at this, but it's pretty easy to grasp. What we're gonna go ahead and do today is create a puzzle for a little girl named Quinn. So the first thing we're gonna do is create the rectangle. So we go to the rectangle icon over here on the left. We go ahead and create it. Just eyeball it for now. Go here so we can go ahead and make changes. I like to convert it to inches. It's just easier for me to figure out what I'm doing. So right now it's actually a pretty good size. It's 12.7 sorry, 12.470 with a height of 4.167, which is typical of the sizing, not exact, but close. So I change it to a woodish tone color. And what I do is I can copy and paste this. You can do this several ways. I like to use control C, control V. You can also click on it and then hit it path sorry I don't use it this way this is what happens when you only use one style well anyway control C control V works <laughs> all right we're gonna go ahead and pick our letters names Quinn all uppercase and I think it's called Best School is the font that I like to use. Let's find it here. It's not Best School. Oh, it is Best School. Okay. All right. So we're going to go ahead and take Quinn's name here. Going to make it a little larger. And you know what? We're going to go ahead and get rid of that. I was supposed to fit it first and then. So what I like to do here is control and hit the cursor. And that way you get a perfect rectangle. Again, it's not going to warp it. Another thing I like to do is I like to create rounded corners for these puzzles. They're for little kids or intended for little kids. So sharp corners are not a good idea. So let me make my screen bigger. Uh, hit shift and plus is what I do. Go to your rectangle here. And if you see the little nodes button, it's the second under the arrow, you go there. And this little circle right here, you can press your cursor and up and you've got a perfectly sharp corner. But like I said, I don't like that. I like rounded corners. So we're just gonna go ahead and do that. You just drop it. Get a perfectly rounded corner. So now I'm going to take both of my items. I just shift and chose both of them. I'm going to center them by highlighting everything. And um, let's see. And then go to align and distribute over here on the right hand side. I press align center, vertical axis, and align center horizontal axis and now it's perfectly centered let me just check the sizing and see if I'm happy with that um 11 by 4 just about so let's go ahead and do that we're going to go ahead and copy the rectangle once again so that was control c control v and highlight just the top portion we're going to go to path we're going to go to Oh, I'm sorry, one more thing. Control and paste the name one more time. Oops. Let's get rid of that, just the name, not the rectangle. Control C, Control V. So we're copying the name one more time. Now we're gonna go ahead and highlight this whole top square plus the name. We're gonna go to Path on the top left and we're gonna hit Exclusion. So that is going to make the space for the name. This is the name down here, Quinn, that will be cut out in the acrylic. This is the wood backing board and this is the top board. So, 
just want to play around with this and see if I could inset it, if it would make a difference or if it's not going to be possible. Not possible. Okay, so we're going to um, undo that move. Control Z is what I do. Or you can also go to path. I need to brush up on my, oh, there we go, undo exclusion. So it's under edit, undo exclusion. I like to just use control Z and it removes the last move or as many moves as you want in the past. All right, so right here, we're just ready to go. I'm going to save this. I'm gonna to go to file, save, Quinn puzzle. Save that. Now I can go into the Glowforge dashboard, new design. Get rid of that. It's not actually in the machine right now. So I don't have anything. I don't have the Glowforge on. I don't have anything in there. This is just the last image. So we're going to hit upload. Quinn puzzle. All right, and then let's shrink this so we can see the entire screen. So, oh, you know what? One thing I forgot to do, it's pretty important. So because we're using text, we have to hit path and object to path. Like I said, I'm no expert, but basically this just makes it vectorized or something to that effect. I've watched other videos that taught me how to do this. So I know the steps. I don't know all the reason behind them, so this might not be the right video. I'm just showing the steps to create this. But there are so many good and informative videos. This is how I learned. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that and then re-add it now that I've saved it. All right, there we go. So now I wanna cut these two. And I don't want to cut the letters because the letters will be cut out of acrylic and the name Quinn and the backing board will be out of one eighth inch Baltic birch. So I'm going to go ahead and set this up with Balt, um, medium basswood hardwood is the setting that I use. And I want to cut, not engrave, cut for both of those. I'm going to put this one up top. And it's actually ready to go. All I have to do is drop the uh, birchwood in the Glowforge and let's go ahead and take care of that. All right, so I'm over here at the Glowforge. I'm gonna go ahead and mask my wood. Um, that prevents the scorch marks. And the other thing I like to do is I like to put a piece of cardstock underneath the wood so that you don't get that flashback. I've been doing that for a while. So at first I wasn't putting it on there and it was just leaving a lot of flashback. I would have to do sanding. Um, so anyway, in this case, we're going to go ahead and mask it and get it ready for cutting. And it's pretty self-explanatory, you just lay it flat. And I just work from the side that is the non non roll side. I don't know how you explain it, but from the left to the right. Okay. And you know what? Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm not going to mask the underside. And this is the reason why. So we're going to layer this wood. It's going to be sandwiched. So it's actually not going to show. Um, so if it does have any flashback, it's not going to be a big deal for this particular project. So I'm just burnishing it so the masking is nice and flat and we don't get any bubbles, which is really important because if you've got loose masking, that's how you can get fires. And I am so scared to get a fire, so I highly doubt that you want that. Speaking of fires though, what I do like to have really close by, let me show you, is a fire extinguisher. I haven't had to use it, thank God, 
But just in case, I do keep it close by, not on the glow forge because if it's on fire, I don't want to have to get to the area where it is and I can't get to it. So I keep it by the door, always handy, just in case. Like I said, never had to use it yet. But anyway, this is all ready to go. My piece of wood is just the tiniest bit warped and they come like that. I try to lay them flat when I put them away, but just to keep it nice and straight on the bed, I use pins and let me show you what those are. So is one of the first things that I cut out are the pins to lay them nice and flat. So let me give you a better view here. Whoops, sorry. There we go. So I just go ahead and pin it down. See right now, it's got a lot of give. That's no good. If you try to cut it like that, it's just not gonna cut through and you're gonna have a wasted project. And this one's got a lot of bounce to it, which is not the best piece of birch. So I order woodpeckers and I always order it on Amazon. You can order it directly through woodpeckers. I like to order it on Amazon because it's fast shipping and it's free shipping. And I believe, and don't quote me on this, free returns just in case, but I just, I can't get this piece to go flat. I usually don't have this much of a problem. There we go. But I'm lazy and I don't want to take out another piece of wood and remask it and you know, all that good stuff. But see now, press down and there's not too much give, too much wiggle room. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn my machine on. I'm not going to engrave, or I'm sorry, cut while I'm in the room. I usually leave the room and what I do is I use a camera. So I have this Tekken camera and I just watch it on my app while it's cutting. I stay close by, you don't wanna leave the room. Sorry, that's my dog. Um, you don't wanna leave the house or you know be too far away. I check on it often and I watch it the entire time. So that's really important too. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this set up. And then once I get it cut, we'll come back. All right, guys, we're gonna go ahead and ready to cut this. So I hit ready, print, let's see how long it's gonna take. And this is just for the wood portion. So the name with the backing. We're going to go ahead and cut the acrylic later. Sorry for my shaky camera. Two minutes and 46 seconds. Okay, see you soon.
mention that with the uh, placement of the letters, as far as the acrylic goes, you can actually move them around and make them closer to save on material. So I like to oops, grab them all. Sorry, I put my tripod away. And then I flip them because of the way that this is set up right now. I'm just gonna move them over and then I can just kind of make them closer. Materials are so expensive, so wherever you can save some material and make even small items later with it is a plus. So then I go ahead and magnify this usually at 100 or 150 and make sure I'm not um, cutting into another letter by accident. So let me just move this. down a bit. A little bit of room there. I'm going to move these up and let's see how that looks. Okay, this one's a little close, this last end here, so I'm just going to move it just the tiniest bit to be on the safe side. All right, oh, see this might be a bit close right here. So let me Move it up just a tiny bit. Okay, I think we're good. I think so, yep. So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna change the material to thick clear acrylic is what I use. Oh, and see it um, bounced the screen just a little bit. So, another thing I do is I go here to the three dots and set focus to the middle of my image when it's stuff like this that's closer. Sometimes it's in a new sheet, um, see here it's focusing. On a new sheet, I don't really care too much because I have more give. All right, let's go back to 100 to do this. Just a little bit again. Okay, I think that's good now. Yep. All right, so we're going to go to ready print, see how long that's going to take. Five minutes, 41 seconds. All right, I'll see you guys in a bit. Okay, so I cut the acrylic and we're going to go ahead and take it out of the machine. So let me go ahead and show you. Hopefully I have steady hands. I turned it off already and I let it sit for a little while. So the smell kind of goes away. I did mention that it gets stinky and just imagine like a nail salon um it gets pretty funky so anyway these are letters you see how just, they just slip out and it cut really really nicely so i'm gonna go ahead and take them here actually you know what let me bring the puzzle here this still has the masking on it so it still doesn't show the wood color but i just want to make sure everything fits correctly with the dry fit I've had instances where the wood, or not the wood, but the letters just don't fit correctly and I have to sand portions of the wood so it'll fit okay. So yeah, that's perfect. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and add a rainbow fabric as the backing, which is what this customer chose. It is a really pretty rainbow fabric. And let's go ahead and create our peekaboo puzzle. Okay, so now I have everything cut and unmasked. Look how pretty these letters are. Um, so once that's all done, then I have to add the fabric to the back side. So this is the flashback that I was talking about that isn't going to be seen because it's going to be sandwiched like this. So once it's all glued up, it, it won't be visible. Anyway, what I use is Aileen's Tacky Spray. 
and that's what I use to adhere the fabric which in this case it's this fun rainbow fabric pattern and once I get that on there that's an immediate bond once I get that on there then I use Gorilla Glue to um, hold the pieces of wood together so let's go ahead and do that I'm gonna go ahead and focus on the table now okay I use one of these little pellets to help me hold the glue in there and a small paintbrush to apply it. Not much. It takes very little. It's, I always waste way more than I need. All right. And then I'm going to cut a little bit more off of here. because once you glue it, there's no going back. I have to make sure that none of this fabric is going to be popping over an edge. And then I also want enough surface room for the wood to touch each other so that it can glue itself or, you know, bond to itself. make sure that we're good. I'll have plenty of room. Should be good. Yeah. See, and none's popping out. We have got enough room on all sides. Actually, we're going to move it over just a bit and try that one more time. Yeah, we're good. Okay, so let's go ahead and glue this down. Mm, let me really quickly grab something to protect my desk. I forgot to get that. I always keep my scrap um, cardboard and for good reason because I always use it for various little things like this that I'm not expecting. All right, so a light mist, you don't want too much on here. And then once you get it centered and where you want it, just kind of rub lightly and that's it. Once you get that down, it's not going anywhere. You just get any bubbles or, you know, kind of wrinkles out. Um, and the reason you want that light mist is because if it's too thick, then it will seep through and you can see that the wet glue and you don't want that. Okay. So that's perfect. Thank you. Piece of cardboard. All right. So let's get to the gluing. And you want enough glue to help it adhere, but not too much glue that it's going to seep out. So I do a pretty thin layer. I don't know if you can tell. Definitely not a thick layer. And I get pretty close to the edges, but not close enough to when it squeezes, it's going to seep. And you'll maybe still get a little seepage, but you can always just kind of clean it up. These puzzles are so fun and personalized and a perfect gift for a baby shower, a new baby, um, your first birthday. Just a really thoughtful and personalized gift is always great.
Oh. All right, ready to glue up. I like to stand up and watch it from the top so I make sure that it's nice and even. And I give it a little squeeze, but not completely. This stuff dries pretty quickly. So I give it a little squeeze and then make sure that it's flat on all four edges before completely gluing it down. Then I take my clamps, whoops, sorry, and just start clamping it down. And as I'm clamping it, making sure that it's still nice and even edged. So you don't want a crooked puzzle. Sorry if I'm off camera, I'm trying to Okay, so then the middle. And I let this set up for minimum 45 minutes, one hour, and then I unclamp it. But at that point, you're done. No painting, no sanding, just a finished puzzle. So let's let this do its thing. And see you in a bit when it's all done. Get a little bit of bubble here. Okay. Okay, everyone. So puzzle's done. Look how cute it came out. And it has that fun, like, 3D. So it's so easy for kids to pull out these um, acrylic letters. And this is going to last a lifetime. So it's something really special that you can make to sell or to gift. And I really appreciate you watching today. This is my first video ever. So if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. And if you're interested in getting your own Glowforge, I'll go ahead and put my referral link. You get up to $500 off and I get the same amount back. So it's a win-win for everyone. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it.